authenticity is identifying emotionally with your audience. Yeah. You know, arrogance is when you believe that the audience should come to you. Let that's the, this is the right. robot that's spitting out bullet points. It's, there's no authenticity in that right. at all. We forget that we're supposed to be spending time opening the opportunities. And you've been saying a lot in the last couple of months online that, that opening is the new closing. And I, th I think that we have a lot of people that have lost sight of the fact that you have to open right. to fill the top of the funnel. Right. So can you well, just go the hardest, to hardest yeah, ask yeah. in business. Jump in here. It's the most difficult commitment to gain now. People are busy. They're afraid to make change. They're afraid of spending money. The status quo is the devil they know, and they've already figured out how to work around it. And it's going to upset this group or that group or this other side of the group to change. So opening is now the most important thing that we do. It's the first commitment, and that's the commitment, can I have your time? And most of the young people in sales, especially millennials, are opportunity starved specifically because they don't believe that they need to create opportunities. Opportunities are supposed to find them. But the problem that with that thinking is that opportunities don't know they're supposed to be looking for you, so they never come looking. And so we have opportunity starved millennials thinking that inbound's going to solve their problem, social's going to solve their problem, LinkedIn, marketing, anybody other than me. And it's a big challenge right now. Because nothing happens if you don't open the opportunity. Right. If you don't go out and interrupt But that's not what our colleagues in this industry are saying. Right. 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 There let's is let's no, be there really is. clear. Let's be really clear. There's a lot of idiots that, that are getting paid that have big platforms telling people, you're not supposed to open an opportunity. You're supposed to wait. They're going to no, go. That's no, the whole no, myth. Let me no. just say this one thing. They're, but they're, right. that, the statistic, which we hope we've all blown it up over the last year, that the buyer goes whatever percent you want to say through their buying process before engaging a seller. Right. That was... That was the, the, the data that produced those results were as accurate as the election polls, okay? It was nonsense. The only time that that happens is when the reactive, lazy salesperson is sitting on their ass waiting for that lead to come find them. And opportunities don't find you. Right. Confirmation bias. Right. We find the information in any set of data that supports the belief that we already have. Right. Simple. Right. So if you believe that cold calling doesn't work because you did it once and got your head handed to you or it felt really bad when you got rejected, then you go out and find data that says cold calling's dead. If you're not really comfortable with relationships because you don't really listen to people because you're a self-centered you know what, then you'll find the information that said, hey, relationship selling is dead. Right. That's, what you, that's what you'll do. But this is why I think that it's important to understand there is not an old school or a new school, there is the school. And so if you just take the hardest ask is what? Getting the time. getting the time, right? Getting getting opening the door. And then you've got to ask little steps along the way. A sales process is a series of commitments. The, here's a fallacy. The buyer is 57% or 70% along in the sales process. Well, here's the deal. If you are engaging at 70%, your sales process is being managed. I think you I think you wrote this recently, being managed by the buyer. The, you're bending or, your or sales your, or your competitor. and your, your price, or your competitor. Right? price is going to reflect. So that's, you, that's definitely you the missed case. the connect step. You missed the discover step. You missed the opportunities to build relationship. What ultra high performers do, what the top people do, is when they get in those situations, they bend it back. They say, "I'm not giving you information. I'm withholding this until your buying process complies with my buying process." They align those things. That's the school of selling. The top salespeople have always done that. The top salespeople have always gone all the way through the process leading up to the commitment to buy, but the commitment to buy happened because of all the commitments before that. What happens when we're late to the party? What does it always come down to? It comes down to price. Yes, you're if, not if a you consultant. Do, right? If you, you don't get in right. on the front end, you have no ability to drive the outcome and to drive to drive yes. the price. It right. devolves the price. Right. Because you've right. got there's no, what else can you differentiate on? Right. Because you're late to the party, because someone else beat you, because they've already defined their criteria. They're, your competitor's now shaping the buying process. Right. So you're left with nothing. So you, but that's but that when you're waiting for the lead, that's what happens. Exactly. You. Um, so you got to get in first. Really, I should think about it. You want to be in first. You want to get out last. Because you want the last thing them, them, for them to remember emotionally is you, because that's how people make decisions, and you want to get in first, mm -hmm. because you can begin shaping these processes. And there's three basic processes you got to shape. You've got to shape the, the sales process to the buying process to the way your stakeholders make decisions, all 5.4 of them, I think. Um, 6.8. 6.8, .8. okay. So you've got you've got to be able to look at that stakeholder group, and each of those stakeholders is making a decision inside that process. Now. I'm sure most of them are waiting for a computer to tell you what bullet points to say to them, and then they're just going to swoon and do business with you. But if you're not doing these things, like if you're not looking at the, you said, like, look at the big picture, if you're not doing that, you're dead in the water.
you should have the healthy skepticism of anything that's generated that way. And I'm not going to be critical of CEB because I think they do particularly good work. But if you go to sales managers and say, let me see the, t the list of the people who did the best. And then you go, this is what the sales manager said. These people are the best. They're the challengers. That's a different opinion than if you would have gone to customers and said, what were the attributes that, you, that made you buy from this particular salesperson? You might have got something that said, I didn't really feel like I was being challenged at all. I thought I was collaborating around an idea. I mean, it might be a very different view from that. So the data that you get and the research and the surveys, and a lot of what we see now are essentially surveys. So LinkedIn does a survey and they reach out to a lot of social selling people and it turns out social selling is the greatest thing that ever happened. Right. You, you need to look and say, in what context is this statement of fact being made? And then can I see the data behind it to say, that context actually creates value for me. It's interesting because it allows me to have an insight that I can change something and see and I can start to experiment. That's all that data should suggest to you. But what happens is because of the internet and because of the access for people sharing this information and standing up on stage with the PowerPoint, and there will be a PowerPoint that says 84% of all B2B sales start with referral. That will be on a PowerPoint in the next 15 to 20 minutes. You, you have to look at that with the skepticism and say, is there some truth there that's worth looking at in my context? Right. And beyond that, you got to have a very healthy skepticism. And all, all the, and all the so salespeople in the audience go, yeah, because right. Right. they don't, they don't want to do because because sales they don't are hard. <laughs> but it, that's like an average temperature. An, an average temperature is nothing more than the highs and lows. There's really never is it the average temperature. And because sales defies a one size fits all box. It just doesn't fit in that. And this, the, all I need to hear is someone say, make a statement like 84% of B2B sales are blah. And I know it's complete BS because anything that's one size fit all is BS because the four of us, we talk and spend time with companies all over the spectrum and they're all different and they're all unique and they all have um, a different set of customers and a different cycle and for any schmuck to stand in front of a group of people and say this is the way it is or this is dead or that is dead it's just it's just disingenuous but statistically a hundred percent of the companies that hire us have hired us that just proves it's not what you know it's how you use what you know that really yeah. matters